Got to wait for him to get back. Oh, there I am. I've got, you got me? Okay. You did that, didn't you, Melissa? You did that. All right. Good evening, Rayford Road. Are y'all glad to be here tonight? Give the Lord praise. Put your hands together. Good to be here. No place I'd rather be than right here. I'm going to go ahead and get started. And uh, I don't know. Am I, am I loud? Do I sound loud? I do? I thought, I thought it was. But I didn't have my mic. We couldn't find it. And I had to run upstairs and run down and come back. And, then, and I'm out of breath. It's workout today. So I'm out of breath. So I'm trying to just wait a little bit here till I can catch my breath and continue to go. So I'll just use Tonda as an excuse. I'm going to wait for her to sit down before we get started. <laughs> Give me a little more time. <laughs> it's good to see everybody here tonight. And, you know, I, I, uh, I don't know. It's, uh, you know, sometimes when you look on YouTube, you look at one of our services and all, you see a lot of what's up here at front. And I know people say, well, you know, they don't have it. About four or five people come to their services. <laughs> and, uh, you know, because I think... I'll just go ahead and say it now. Y'all, we got a bunch of people in the back. Y'all can't see them, but they're back there. They're back. They like it back there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's just, let's just get our mind right here and quit fooling around, right? I've got uh, some announcements. Number one is Sunday night, there will be no yo, yo night. Uh, the, the youth will be in Ridgecrest and... Uh, and then it's Father's Day and stuff. But then, anyway, there'll be no uh, youth night uh, this coming Sunday. And as I mentioned that about the uh, Rich Crest, tonight, make sure you pick up a paper that's going to have all the names listed of the kids and the counselors. Yes. It's been revived since Sunday, so get a new one. Right. It's been revived since Sunday. Y'all don't know it, but there was a mistake on there, and we we don't want nobody praying mistakes. Okay. There's been an addition. Okay, there's been an addition. Okay, all right. Yeah, okay. But anyway, make sure you pick one up tonight. They're not there yet, but they will be here before long. Okay. And Lauren's kids. And Lauren's kids, yes. There will be two, two stacks of them, our kids and then Lauren's kids, which we'll be doing that each week for the summer for, for how long she's there. All right. Okay. Uh, well, that was my next one in line. I didn't really pick up the list. Uh, Summer Blast starts tomorrow. That's tomorrow, isn't it? 9 a.m. And uh, Sister Sharon's got that, got that going and uh, just looking forward to that. But if you hadn't, you could still get signed up if you haven't done it. But uh, that'll, be, that'll be starting tomorrow for three Thursdays in a row. Did I, okay, y'all got right. Okay. What was that? What's all about? When she gave me a thumbs up, it's got to be good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I didn't try to tell them who was. Uh, to, you know, that's where I mess up when I start telling them who's supposed to, be, who's old enough, and who ain't. Uh, the vacation Bible school. We still need workers there, and so there's a sign-up sheet. I know we have got uh, a lot of folks that have, but it takes a lot of people, folks. And if you haven't signed up, we just we encourage you to do it. Just go ahead and put your name there. They'll have you. You'll, you'll have somewhere to work, and uh, you'll enjoy it. You'll be glad that you did it. So just keep that in mind. Also, this is this is new coming up on July the second. This will be our Fourth of July bash, I guess you would call it. But it'll be a, a fellowship night on Sunday, J uh, July the second on Sunday evening at six o'clock. Will be a church-wide fellowship at my house. And this is for youth, everybody, everybody. They'll and we'll just be a, a gathering, and you can bring. I think they said just bring a appetizer, or favorite dessert, a dish, dessert, whatever, whatever shows up, we'll eat, and uh, just bring a little something. And uh, that'll be July the second at six o'clock. We should have a a blast. It, the only th the only bad thing about it is, is I've got to work now to try to clean up the place. You know, <laughs> so <laughs> y'all pray for me. <laughs> and then uh, the Honduras trip, the sign-up sheet is there for July 23rd through the 28th. Sunday is the deadline. <clears throat> we only have three or four, I think, something like that. So we, 
it, it'll, we'll make a decision whether it'll, it'll happen or not based on who signs up. So you've got the rest of this week till Sunday, but if, you, if you're planning on doing it or you think about doing it, go ahead and, what was it uh, uh, George said Sunday? Either teeter or totter, but you can't just keep doing both. You gotta do one or the other, I think is what he said. But uh, just, uh, if you, you wanna be a part, make sure you get, uh, go ahead and get signed up. And then just a reminder, the June the 24th on Saturday morning from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. is a new members class. We will have a continental breakfast type thing there for whoever is there. But there is a sign-up sheet for that, and we do need to know how many is coming. I believe we got some already signed up. I know there's more yet that's coming that haven't signed up. So, And, and remember this, that uh, you can be a part, you can go through that class and still not be a member, okay? It's not like if you go through it, well, I would guess I'm a member. <laughs> no. But you can go through and find out a lot about the church and, and, and you get to kind of know the people there. And you, we, get, we share, we share uh, testimonies, things of that nature. But you get a lot of information about the church and um, it's just, we encourage you to, if you, and I know we've got some that uh, want to, to join the church, but you can go through it just to check it out. So I, I encourage you, please sign up though if you want to be, if you want to be a part of it. So, all right, we'll get into our prayer time. We've got a lot of folks here tonight, and I thank the Lord for each and every one of you. <clears throat> tonight, uh, do you have something to write with? The, uh, I want to, uh, a lot of you may have gotten the uh, prayer request this afternoon that, that went out for uh, John Wingard. Did y'all get that? Anybody see that? Or, yeah. It's, uh, he um, actually he he's had a liver transplant before several years ago, and then he got cancer here a while back in, in that liver. And so today at 5:30 they were they had found the liver. He was going to start the process. So I just encourage y'all to be praying for him and um, that the Lord will bless in that. That's <laughs> it's really truly amazing. And so John, John Wingard, and uh, Brother Michael Spivey wants you to continue to pray for him, keep him lifted up, and uh, just pray for our church, pray for our church. God's blessing, God is blessing our church, and I'm so thankful. But there's always, there's always those needs and as we'll probably see tonight, there's always, Satan's always around. And um, boy, he loves, to, he loves to give God's people a hard time. So uh, just, just some things to share there. But tonight, if you have a prayer request, uh, I'll get to you. Just raise your hand or a praise report what God is doing or has done. I know this is going to sound really strange. But as I was leaving our neighborhood today, coming to church, there was an ambulance that pulled in down at the uh, end of the street at one of the houses and was uh, uh, unloading the, you know, the, the bed and everything. So I know somebody was being picked up to take, go to the hospital. I don't know any names or anything, but it's just, uh, you know, request prayer for them. Amen. We don't know who it is, but God does. Amen. Any others, prayer requests, any, anything, any needs? And I know there's probably, here we go. <clears throat> um, I got a friend named Miss Claudia Taylor. She's a little older than me. She's a young lady. But uh, she found out that she's got some blockage in her intestines. She's in St. Vincent's in Clay County. I'd ask you to pray for her. All right, Claudia Taylor. All right, and I, I'm I'm guessing that was Claudia Townsend. Okay. Yes, she is a young lady. She graduated with me, <laughs> but she's a sweet lady. I can tell you that. I have a couple of requests. Jesse, um, my youngest, is still. There's just issues every week. Something physical with her, and um, last week she had to go to the ER again. Um, she may be facing some possible surgery. 
Um, she's been in great pain, um, but the Lord has just been kind to her. Um, so pray for Jesse. If it's it's just every week, there's something. And my sister Lorraine is still pretty sick. She's at home. Um, she can't get up by herself or anything. She has 24-7 care right now, and she just, they did confirm that she has sclerosis of the liver, non-alcoholic sclerosis of the liver, and so she's got to get some strength to be able to have some biopsies and some tests to see, so continue to remember her. I will tell you that they've been attending assembly for Assembly of God, and her husband, Mark, went up to pray for her, and the Lord just really laid on him, and he got right with God and stuff. So there are some positive, great things out of this. Amen. We remember Lorraine, keep her lifted up. There's a lot of struggles. Any Anyone else? I just want to thank the Lord for being back to church today. I've missed a couple of weeks, feeling great. Glad to be back praising the Lord. Good to have Bruce and them back, and they battled some COVID, and there's some other folks in our in our church that's COVID's been running through their family, and so we just want to pray pray for them. Anyone prayer requests? Praise. Here we go. Uh, Sylvia is scheduled for uh, surgery Friday, which is as soon as they could get her in there. And she, you know, she battles kidney stones all the time and she's in an awful lot of pain. So she needs, she needs the prayers. When's she going to surgery? Friday. Friday. All right, this Friday for uh, Miss Sylvia, pray for her. Go, yes, Jim. Yeah. Remember Steve, uh, Jeff Taylor, he's under the weather tonight. So remember him in prayer. All righty. Any others, Robert? Um, I got a good friend of mine, as you know, all sorts um, pray all, but um, my friend, Michelle Cromit, her husband, Dick Cromit, he had three uh, artery blockages in his heart, and uh, they supposed to put seizure on him on Friday. So they're hoping he don't, they don't have to. Uh, operate on him, but if y'all would pray for him. And, um, you know, our source is a praying source. Uh, I am a testimony to that, and also my granddaughter is one too. So, you know, prayer changes the things, but also changes you also. And when you ask people to pray, and when they pray for you, you can feel that. And it's very much appreciated when you, when you receive that prayer and the Lord answer that prayer. Amen, Robert. The Lord said, my house should be called a house of prayer. Yes. I just want to praise the Lord that Chris got his furlough. So Saturday he'll get to come home for a few hours. And then it's crazy because I just seen Stephanie like Tuesday when I was at work because she's teaching uh, summer school. And she just told me she's probably one of the sweetest people I've ever met. And she just said he was on two different hospitals list for the trip. And she said, but it's just brought us closer to the Lord and all. It was so weird. And then today, just, you know, but anyway, so. That's Stephanie Wingard. She's talking about John and how the Lord brought everything together for him today. And we thank the Lord for that. Any, anyone else? Raise your hand. <clears throat> I got a couple. Um, Deb Stevens' mother, Janice Davis, fell today and broke her hip, and so they're going to have to do surgery, which I think will be tomorrow. I'm not sure what hospital uh, yet, but if y'all would remember her, please. Um, and also, my sister-in-law, my well, actually, my sister-in-law's sister up in North Carolina, um, I didn't realize this, but she's been in the hospital for over two months for something, and I couldn't get a hold of her today, so I'm not sure what, but the Lord knows all about it. Her name is Shelly, if y'all would remember her. Yep. Shelly. All right. Any, anyone else? Yes. <clears throat> I 
Well, I have a praise, and I, I wasn't going to say anything, but I'm telling you, I, I am so, 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 so thankful for the men and women in this church that cares, that will go out of their way to do things for you when you need it. And uh, I woke up yesterday morning with um, about 100 ears of corn on my porch, <laughs> so I spent the day uh, creaming corn shucking corn and creaming it but I am so so thankful thankful that we have such a loving church and our men um, Odell and and uh, Tim Sweat all these men that think Mike Yarber that shares their produce they you know with us I'm just so thankful 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 Amen, and I am too. I'm thankful, uh, and that just continue to do it and grow and in doing that, uh, just caring, caring about one another, meeting needs, you know, giving of yourself. And I thank the Lord, and I think, I think you put it out on Facebook, so that was, you you let a lot of people know about it. So that's good. Anyone else? Anything? <clears throat> All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, and as always, anyone, feel free to come to the altar, any, anybody, and I encourage you to, and uh, let's just, you heard these requests, and let's just, be, let's just be lifting them up tonight to the Lord. Father God, we come, we come tonight, we come in the precious name of Jesus. Father, it's because of Jesus we even have the privilege, the honor, the right to be able to come before you. And to know, Lord, that you hear us and that you'll listen, that you listen to us and that we are your children. And your word says you hear the cries, you, you hear the cries of the righteous. And we stand in the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. So, Father, we thank you and praise you for this great, wonderful, awesome privilege, Father. And so tonight, Lord, as we as we come, come together, all of us, just that we come together in one mind and one accord as a church, a body of believers, seeking your face, knowing, Father, that we, we're not worthy. It's your grace and your mercy, Lord, that has saved us and given us, Lord, this hope that we have. You're the one that has given us the precious Holy Spirit as a guarantee to let us know who we are. Father, we, can, we just stand in awe of you. And tonight as we come together, Lord, I thank you for this church. And as Miss Mary said, those that are willing to give of themselves and be there to help and meet needs. Father, that's just, that's just who we are, that's who we should be as believers. And Father, I pray that you will continue to bless, to bless our church, Lord. But I know there's people that are struggling, going through a lot of, a lot of, a lot of struggles. And Satan's alive and well and people battling diseases and things of that nature. But tonight, Lord, I do, I want to pray, Lord, right now that everything is going well for John Wingard. We thank you, Lord, that you have made it possible, Lord, for him to receive another liver in his lifetime. And so, Father, uh, I pray that you'll be there with him and Stephanie. May your presence be there in a, in, a, in a wonderful, wonderful way with them, Father. We pray for our brother, Michael Spivey. I just lift him up. He needs you. He's going through a very, very, very tough, tough time. And Father, you know all about it. You know everything about him and what's surrounding him. Lord, nothing's hidden from you. Nothing's hidden from you. And Father, I just pray, God, that you will just bless him tremendously. Help him for the next week, Lord, as he tries to come finish up this treatment and can just begin to mend up and, and, and get over it. And Father, we pray that it will have done what needs to be done to allow him to be cancer free. Lord, and that you will continue to work and use him and work in his life, Lord. He needs you just like all of us, Lord. We need you. And he certainly does through this hard struggle that he's going through. So Father, we lift him up. Just also want to pray, Lord, for uh, the request that Brother John had about someone that was getting picked up, Lord, you know exactly what's, what that was about. 
We pray for them wherever they are, whatever they're going through. Any, any time, Lord, we pray for folks that we don't know anything about them. We pray, God, for their, uh, their salvation. Spiritually, Lord, we pray for them. And for, for Claudia Jo Taylor, Lord, I, I just pray for her, Lord, that whatever's going on there, that doctors can take care of it for her and uh, get her back to, to good health. Uh, for Jesse Beck, just pray for her, pain and possible surgery, a lot of struggles. A lot of struggles, Lord. We pray. We pray for our families, young families, Lord. It goes through a lot of different things as Satan just comes against us in this life. Father, your word said that in this life we will have tribulation. We know that. We're in a sin-cursed world and sin-cursed bodies. It's, it's, we're here, Lord. But it's, you also said be of good cheer because you, you've overcome the world. So although we're here, God... We can just keep our hearts and minds centered on you and be lifted up, God. And I pray that for her. Pray for Lorraine, Lord, uh, physically, all the stuff that she's going through. But pray for her and her husband both. Pray for them spiritually. We keep them lifted up. For Sister Sylvia that uh, stays with Miss Sherry, God, I pray for her and the upcoming surgery and the kidney stones that she's been battling. Uh, the surgery Friday, Lord, I just pray that you'll be there and everything will go well for her. Uh, Mr. Jeff Taylor, that's been been here with us for a few months, Lord, and I just pray, God, that you will bless him with exactly what he needs, and he's going through some struggles physically. Just be there for him. Uh, pray for uh, Brother Robert Demir's request of uh, a friend's husband and heart trouble and uh, what's needed there, Father, that you will go there and provide. You know exactly who that is. And for Miss Debbie Stevens' mom, Janice, uh, that uh, has failed, broke her hip. God, I pray for her. I pray for Debbie and them. And I pray for her mom. I pray for her spiritually, God. You, you know everyone's heart. And I just pray, God, you will bless them through all of this. And then for Janie's, uh, Janie's sister, uh, sister-in-law's sister uh, named Shelly that's uh, been hospitalized a lot. And, uh, Father, you know the needs there. And Father, it's so good to know we serve a God who knows all things. We don't have to know who these folks are. We don't even have to know anything about what's going on in their life. Their names are brought to us. It's our job to bring them to the throne of grace in prayer. Make them, just lift them up to you and ask, Lord, that you would go and work your will in their lives and bless and touch and heal. Provide exactly what's needed because you're the one who knows what's needed. And not only that, you're the only one who can provide what's needed, Father, in so many cases. And so, Father, we just thank you for this time. Again, thank you for our church. Pray for our church as you will lead and guide us, Lord, that you will be pleased, that you will be pleased with, with, uh, with us. And uh, we just, we just want to follow you and that your will be done uh, in what we do. Lord, we, we all need you. And so, Father, we look to you. We cry out to you, Father. Be with us. Keep us close to you. And bless us, Lord, as we do our very best, Lord, to, to bless you and worship you in spirit and in truth in this place. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> All right, grab your Bibles or your phone or whatever it is you use. We'll go back, we'll go back to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17. That's where we've been here for two or three weeks. And it looks like we'll probably be there another, uh, another week. But if you will, let's stand in honor of reading God's Word. And uh, for anybody, anyone that may not have been with us or whatever may not know exactly what's going on here, I'll just give you just a, a quick little review here of chapter 17. Uh, at, at the beginning of the chapter, we're introduced to a Philistine champion named Goliath who has paralyzed the army of God's people, Israel. They're scared to death of him. They won't do anything uh, to challenge him. And then a young David, who's been secretly been anointed to be the next king, he shows up on the scene and he hears Goliath. We saw that last week and David heard him. And I thought, you know, that's, Goliath kind of messed up when he, he, he allowed David to hear 
because David is being used by God. That's good. But that should be our prayer. God use us. And he can, you know he can use any of us. You might think he can't. You don't have a lot. Of, he can use you. So uh, he's, uh, he's heard Goliath, and he's kind of wondering why no one stepped up. He kind of talks about it. Well, you know what? You, you're going to do it. He's to find the God of Israel, you know. Why are y'all, why are y'all standing around? They, they, they've been standing around 40 days. They haven't done anything. And so it kind of, his brother gets kind of aggravated with him, and so his own brother ridicules him, belittles him in front of everybody. Uh, the king then, when David tells him, he says, well, you know, I, I'll go fight him. And the, he goes before the king. king tells him, well, you can't. You're not big enough. You're, you're a youth. He's discouraged by the king. David's here. But God's using David. That's so good. And that's so good. So before he goes, though, he tells Saul, the king, he says, look, I'll go fight him. And I'll tell you why. Because I've already been in some bad places, and God's already delivered me. Time and time again. Can anybody say amen? amen. He's, I know. I've been there. I've experienced it. I know what God can do. And so I'm, I'm trusting by faith I'm going out there to, to fight him. I know who I am. But what's important is, is, I, is I know who's with me and has always been with me. When you go before a lion and a bear, you're, you're probably in trouble if God's not with you. You know, but he's been there, and through experience, he reveals his past experience of God's deliverance in his life. So we ended last week. After he tells that, then Saul says, "Well, all right, go, and the Lord be with you." You know, it's kind of like you ain't got a prayer. <laughs> you ain't got a prayer. Go, but you go, go do it. That's what you want to do. There ain't, no, there ain't no line around here of people waiting to go do it. So if you want to do it, you go do it. And so David, he's going to go. So let's, let's read here. I've got about, about 10 verses I'm going to work through tonight. So it says in verse 38, 38 is where we pick up. Then Saul clothed David with his armor, with Saul's armor. And he put a helmet of bronze on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. And David strapped his sword over his armor, and he tried in vain to go, for he had not tested them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not tested them. So David put them off. Then he took his staff in his hand, and he chose five uh, smooth stones from the brook and put them in his shepherd pouch. His sling was in his hand, and he approached the Philistine. That was it. That's what he had. And the Philistine moved towards and came near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. And when the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, but for he was but a youth, ruddy, and a handsome in appearance. They sent a little pretty boy out here to fight me. And the Philistine said to David, I am a am I a dog that I that you come to me with sticks? And the, and the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me and I'll give your flesh to the birds of the air, to the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you defy. That's the, that's what the, that's the issue here. <laughs> Folks, listen, I've said it, said it here before. Many times. The, the battle is spiritual. Right. Always has been, always will be, still is today. Do you understand that? Yeah. It'll look like it's physical. Amen? But it ain't. It's spiritual for God's people. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. He didn't beat around the bush. And I will give the dead bodies of the host of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel and that all this assembly may know that the Lord saves not with sword and spear for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hand. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. And as we get into this, Lord, I just pray for myself. 
Lord, that you will take me and that I just speak what we need to hear tonight. Lord, I want you to touch hearts. You're the one that touches hearts. You touch our mind. Do things for us, Lord, that we, we need done for us, for each and every one of us, every single person here. May your presence, your spirit be strong here on us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to look at, at, at verses 38 through 40 right here first. I broke it down into three, three sections. And so I kind of want to make sure I move. Get, get on through here with our time. But uh, the first, those 38 through 40, I just talked, I just, I just kind of labeled it preparation. So it, it, David's going to go and here he's going to, the preparation that, to go. And so if we look at it. If we look at it, Saul, he decides, well, I just, I put my armor on him. I, I can at least do that. I can give him my armor since he's going to go. And uh, so I just wrote here, Saul's thinking conventional warfare. This is the way it's, it's, this is the way you fight, you know? I mean, he's got all this armor on. You need the armor on. I mean, that's the way we do it. That's con the, the conventional way, the, uh, you know, the, yeah, and I, in my mind, I'm, I'm in my, it goes back. It's kind of like, well, this is the way we've always done it. Well, the thing about it is, though, God can decide he wants to do things different. He wants to do something new. Something you may have not, you hadn't thought about. Amen? And that's all right with me. How about y'all? If it comes from God, it's good. Amen? Yeah. doesn't matter if it's something you're used to or not used to or whatever. You're, if it's from God, it's good. If it's from God, I want it. Amen? And uh, so, but Saul, all Saul knows is this. <clears throat> and so he puts all that on. I just wrote, I just kind of wrote down here. Everything he put on him was man-made. David's got armor. <laughs> David's got the kind of armor that we can have today. Yes, it's the armor of God. Amen? amen? Go ahead and say amen. I hope you know, you know what I'm talking about. I hope you know what I'm talking about. It's the armor of God, and that's what you need because, like I said, today the battle is still spiritual. So you, you need spiritual armor. You need the armor of God. Okay, let me keep, let me, let me keep moving. <clears throat> uh, first thing here is Saul, if you'll remember, Saul was from the shoulder up taller than everybody else in the, the nation of Israel. He's a big man. So he's putting this stuff on a, a teenage boy. You, you, you just kind of can picture that in your mind, what that looked like. I guess he was the king. I, I, David probably felt like he let him do what he wanted to do. But I love the fact that in at the end of uh, verse 39 there, it says, David, David says, look, I, I can't do this. This ain't me. This ain't me. I can't do it. I can't do it. And so he pulls it off and says, so David put them off. David himself made the decision. I ain't going like this. This ain't going to work. Because, see, I know, I know what works. You know why I you know, why I know what works? Because I've been there. God can do anything with me dressed just like I am, he said. And I know that. And he's the same God. Boy, we sang that Sunday. That is so. He's the same God. He don't change. He don't change. And he can do some wonderful things for those whose hearts are right toward him. Uh, so good. So David just makes a decision. I ain't doing this. And then I, uh, for verse 40, I just put down here. And this is good advice for any of us. Be who you are. Okay? Don't try to be who you're not. Just be who you are. David knew who he was. And a lot of times we can, as Christians, and we can look around us and see how other people do things and who they are and, how they, and, and try to imitate and look like somebody else, that sort of thing. Just be who you are. Make sure your heart's right with God. It's individual, folks. It's an individual thing. And if you if if you if you're right with the Lord, I mean, there's things that we have to deal with in our lives and our as we live this life, because we get out of whack now and then. Amen. Amen. 
And we have to deal with things. And if you don't deal with it, it causes some problems. But if you deal with things and keep your heart tender and towards the Lord, he can do it. There's no telling what he might do with any of us. Any of us. <clears throat> and so David knows who he is. And, I'm, I just, and, I, and the reason I, I won't... David's a shepherd. That's who he is. That's all he's been so far in life. He's a shepherd. That's all he knows. And then look at, look at verse 40. Then he took, and I, and I circled his, his staff. It's his staff. Why is it his staff? Because he's a shepherd. He's got a staff. He's a shepherd. That's what he's got. That's what he's always had in his hand. And he chose five smooth stones from the brook and put them in his shepherd's pouch. He's got a shepherd's pouch because he's a shepherd. That's all he is. That's all he's ever been. He's got a pouch. Okay? Saul's thinking he needs some armor. Folks, you don't, all you need is the Lord. That's it. You say, oh, well, I don't know. He's the same God. He's the same God. He's the shepherd pal. Then he says his sling. Shepherds carried slings with him to sling, throw it, keep, run stuff off. All he had was what he had because he was a shepherd. That's who he was. He was a shepherd boy. But you know the old song that says, when some folks see a shepherd boy, God sees a king. Amen. God can do anything with anybody. And it doesn't have to be big or elaborate. Sometimes he just does things with you that nobody knows anything about. But boy, did it bless your heart and strengthen you and lift you up and encourage you, maybe in times of struggles. It's real. It's real. So David was a shepherd. And uh, God can use you. And you don't have to be Someone else. Just be who you are. Number two. We'll move into the second part here. And this is a, I just titled this, uh, The in- Enemy Intimidation. The enemy loves to intimidate. And folks, we have an enemy, amen? amen? And I told you that the battle really is spiritual, isn't it? We have a spiritual enemy. Do y'all have any idea who he is? Well, I think we've probably been told. Sometimes we live and act like it was a fairy tale. But it's real. And you don't even think about it until he has struck. And then all of a sudden, there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth because he has struck. And you know it. Know that. Do that preventative stuff. Keep your mind on the Lord and let that that armor that we need to have on. Let it do its work. Let it do its work. So I thought about this and that the end, and I, we'll work our way through this, that Satan loves to intimidate. Okay? He does. But Moses told him just in, in Deuteronomy 31, 6, Moses gave them instructions and said, you're going in. God's going to take you in. Joshua's going to take you in to the promised land. But he told them in verse 6 in Deuteronomy 31, Be strong and courageous. Do not fear. You hear that? Do not fear. Now we're looking at faith versus fear here tonight. He said, do not fear. How many of y'all ever had fear creep in? Okay, the Bible says that the Lord hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but a power and love of sound mind. When fear starts coming in, who is it? Well, you know who it is. Yeah. How many of you have you said, how, I, just, there's all kinds of things, you know, when you, you get a bad report medically or bad, battling a disease or you've lost your job or you, you ain't got money, you're trying to raise your family, you ain't got it. It's just all of this stuff here, you, what am I going to do? The fear, you know. But then one of the fears that I have, and I, to me it's probably one of the biggest fears we should have, is the fact that sometimes I fear that my loved ones are not going to know Christ. That's what matters. What, that's the most, uh, if you're going to fear something, that would be the thing. But I just got to feel like God's telling me, you don't have to fear. Trust me. Have you got a faith enough to believe that I'm God and I can save them? No matter where they are, what they've done, it doesn't matter. Right? And that's good. 
And I don't have to fear. If you can get there, I, can t- I want to tell you something. Life's a whole lot better if you get there. Because if you don't, it's turmoil. Because if, if, if fear's there, it's there. And it affects you. Get, it, get rid of it. <clears throat> That's one thing I say, say here about David. And think about this. Everybody in the, the army in Israel was scared. Fear. I never got a hint of any fear in David. David didn't say, I'll do it, but Lord, I'm scared to death. Nah, you didn't do it. We, don't, we never get a hint of fear. But why? why, why what's the difference? The difference is God Almighty. The, the God of Israel. The one and only God. Who's, who's actually... Spiritually, he's coming against all those other gods that are the, the Philistines have and saying that I'm going to, show, going to show them I'm God. And when it's all said and done and it's all over with, folks, he's going to show the whole world I'm God and I'm here and I'm established and it's done because I'm the, I am God. <clears throat> so he tries to instill fear. <clears throat> And I wrote this down, and I believe it's true. In reality, if we just look at it in reality, David was no match for this enemy. Right? They, ain't nobody, nobody there would, is thinking, that, well, ain't nobody, ain't nobody giving David a chance. Because in reality, you look at reality, it just, it, it can't happen. It can't happen. And this is one thing I want you to remember about the, the enemy that we have is that you are no match, and I'm no match. Okay, just go ahead. I don't care how spiritual you think you are. don't care how long you've been a Christian. None of that stuff. If you're not careful and you don't lean on the Lord, he will whip you. He will get next to you. He will get to where in places where you never dreamed he'd get to you. And he'll cause you some major damage and hurt. Okay? Because you're no match for him. We lean on the Lord. Amen? We lean on the Lord. When I say we need the Lord, I need the Lord, you better believe I, that's exactly right. I'm a, I'm, I'm a dead duck without the grace of God on my life and the mercy in his hand on me. David knew that too for himself. Neither are we. <clears throat> Fear is one of uh, Satan's tactics. And I, uh, I just, when I think about fear and faith, David is just, all he's doing is just exuding faith. That's, I, mean, I just faith in my God. The fear was not there. I, I, I will re- I'll just read Ephesians real quick about, about the armor of God. It says, Therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth because you're going to have to stand because it's coming, okay? That's when you have to stand against it because it's going to come against you. Have on the belt of truth, here's the truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, that righteousness in Jesus Christ, and has the shoes for, and, and has shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. Know the peace that we have with the Holy God through Jesus Christ. And then it says this, uh, the King James says, and above all, that's what the King James said. Above all, the USB says here, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith. There we go. That, above all, you, it, it just starts with faith. You're saved by grace through faith. It's that faith that's got you there. Then you got, you got to live by faith. I love that old song, Living by Faith. We, need just, we, we, we live by faith. You need to live. David's living by faith. He's living by faith. Take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the fire, flaming darts of the evil one because you're going to shoot them. Boom, boom, boom. If you can't put them out, they'll get there. They'll do damage. And you'll get fear in there if you can. That's what he's doing. And, and there was a good place for David to be a little fearful. But, but he, was, he, he, he was not. And before I leave that, before I leave that, <clears throat> I want you to remember the apostle Peter denied the Lord because of fear. Amen? 
You know I mean? That's exactly what it was. Jesus told him, Satan wants to sift you. You know what kind of sifter he had? Sifter of fear. He put him in a spot where it was fear. There was fear, and fear made him do what he did not think he would ever do. Somebody say amen. amen. It's real. It's real. Satan does that. We're no match for him. But I will read this in 1 Peter 5. The same man that denied Jesus because of fear. Verse, uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so at the proper time he may exalt you. Let me tell you something. What we're reading here tonight was the proper time. God brought David to this place, and God fixing to exalt him at the proper time. But there ain't, there ain't no fear there with David. Then Peter goes on here and says, Casting all your what? Anxieties. Fears. Folks, the fear and anxiety has crippled this society across the board. Folks, either it's the same God or it's not. The word's the truth or it's not. Casting all your anxiety, your fear on him because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, there it is. You got one. He prowls around like a roaring lion. He's roaring just like Goliath was roaring. All that stuff. Intimidating David. And the only thing was there, he couldn't intimidate that man. Couldn't do it. Seeking whom he to, to devour. Seeking someone to devour. Then he says resist him. But how? How? Resist him what? Firm in the faith. Without faith, you can't resist him. You've got to be a born-again believer. He doesn't like God's people, and he's going to try you. But you need that to understand it, the spiritual battle against you, and how we handle it and how we, do, how we deal and live our lives is a, is, is a testimony to the God we serve, to the people out in the world. If we're broke down and fearful and just as... Bad off as they are, I, what in the world? Why would they even want to know anything about this God you're talking about? He ain't done nothing for you. You're a basket case yourself. This may be my last sermon. <laughs> that's the truth. I mean, folks, that's just truth. Is, is it the truth or no? It's got to be the truth. It makes a difference. I just found it. I found it when I'm struggling big time. Go get close to the Lord. Amen. That's all I can tell you. That's all I can tell you. So, anyway, I just wanted to, to do that. I still got 10 minutes, and so that's good. I'm going to make it. The last thing I wrote on that was David focus wasn't on Goliath. Okay? His focus wasn't on Goliath. But the Lord will see that right, right here. Let's go into net to the, from uh, verse forty-four or for, verse forty-five through forty-seven here. And David said, "Now, now, David's listening to him. He ain't scared David at all. Now, David's going to talk." And David said to Philistine, "You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin." And I just put down there. You got to remember, <laughs> he, what it, what I, what I think he's really telling Goliath is, look here. You're coming with this kind of man-made stuff. You don't realize this battle's spiritual, and the one you defied is the God we serve, and you ain't fighting me, you're fighting him, and you're in trouble. Amen? That's it. You come with that, that's just man-made stuff. Does that make sense? That's, I, I, I like that. He says, you, you come with, to me with that, but I'm coming, <laughs> I'm coming to you with something else. He says, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. I come to you in the name. And I just wrote this down when you're talking about in the name of. Uh, I wrote here, coming in the authority of that person. So I'm coming in the authority of God Almighty. Stand, that's the reason you need to know the word because you can speak the word of God, the authority of the word of God. It's not my words. I speak the word of God. And he said, I'm coming in his name. That's who I'm coming because he's the one that you're attacking. And you don't realize he's tough. He's tough. But I, I, I run across this. I thought it was good that David could have said, 
said, been thinking this or said this. I come as a representative of the Lord of hosts, of, of hosts, the God who has heavenly armies at his command. That's who I'm coming in. I am a sent man. I'm a sent man. A man on a mission from God. Now, I don't think David had that in his mind, but he could have. He could have. All I th- all, all, in my mind, the way I see it, all David knows is I'm a shepherd boy, and I, for whatever reason, Daddy sent me over here to feed my brothers, and I've got caught up in this, and I'm just here, and I, I ain't backing off from that, and I know the Lord's helped me, and, I, and here I am. I'm going, I'm going to do it. I don't think he's got all these grandiose sayings, you know? I, 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 I don't, but... That's, that's what he was. That's what he was. Even if he didn't realize it, that's what he was in God's hand. And so he comes, he tells him, he, he, he's, he's specific, the God of the armies of Israel. Israel's God. Yahweh, there's only one creator. In the beginning, God, him, that one. There is no, there is no other. Not like that. And so whom you defiled, and I, that's, that's who Goliath is, is actually coming against. Now, he goes on to say, this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. Sounds like he got a lot of confidence. Uh, but, he, he, but, but he does. David, but he, what did he say? This day the Lord. Don't ever forget, he didn't say this day I'm going to do such and such thing to you. No, he said this day the Lord will deliver. And I, I don't ever forget that. Don't ever forget that. Because remember, you're no match. You're no match without him. David knew without the Lord, I this, this is going to be ugly. It's going to be ugly. And this day, I, I just put down here, David knew that he was not the deliverer. It was not him that would deliver Israel. Later on, we know the story within the story. The deliverer would come from David. Folks, it's amazing. This Bible is an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing. And I, you know, when I think about that and it says, the Lord will deliver you to my hand, I, I think about uh, Psalm 121 where it says, you know, from where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. That's what he said. He knew. He knew. He knew that. That's where his help was. He knew that then. As a young boy, he already knew that. That's the reason it's good to go ahead and get to tra- start training your children just like this. What was that the other day I said that, Susanna Wesley, got, as soon as they can talk, let, get them to pray it. Okay? Get them, get them into it. Expose them to it. It's amazing what he, God can do with a teenager. Oh, look at that Sunday. I'm going to look at that. And he says, <clears throat> he said, I'll strike you down. I'm gonna, I'll cut your head off, and not only will I feed your body, I'm going to feed the body all the rest of these uh, Philistines. So, and what he says at the end of that, he says in the last line of verse 46, that all the world may know that there's a God in Israel. All I, 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 this ain't about me. I ain't trying to look like nobody, and you don't ever, don't ever try to look like nobody. Whatever you're doing, you're, you're doing it for the glory of God. When it becomes for your glory, you missed it, and he knew it. Okay? You can fool all of us. And you can look real good on the outside. But if you're doing it for the wrong reason, he knows. He knows. David was doing it for one reason, and that was for God. This God that I serve, that's the first thing he said. That man's defiling our God. Ah, that's good. So good. <clears throat> I just wrote here. Now, this, this whole incident made David famous pretty quick. But that was not why he did it. He had no idea what he was fixing to happen with him. He did it for the fame and the glory of the Lord, not his own name. He wanted all the earth to know that there was a God in heaven. <clears throat> that, was, that was his reason. And then I, I'm, I'm closing here. I got, I got three minutes. Hmm. So... Verse 47, and it says, and that all this assembly may know that, and he's saying, I want all the earth to, all, all the earth to know this God of Israel, but that all this assembly, and I ain't for sure he ain't talking about all this assembly of Israel here with me, that don't believe, that, that they're scared, that all this assembly may know that the Lord saves. The Lord saves, but not with a spear and a sword. 
Y'all all got spears and sword here and it didn't do y'all any good. Y'all scared to death. That right? The Lord saves not with the sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's. It's a spiritual battle, folks. Always has been, still is. Still is. One day, we'll be in the presence of a holy God in that spiritual realm. I'm going to close here as I think about that. It says, the Lord saves, and, and I'll close with two, got two verses, two scriptures. The Lord saves not with spear or sword. Number one, I put here, I just said, the Lord's salvation came on an old rugged cross. That's why the Lord saved. It wasn't the sword and the spear. The battle, the battle was fought. It was the Lord's battle. I thought the, the battle was fought in Gethsemane and on Golgotha. That's where it was. It was fought and won right there. And we, listen to me, just like David, he was given victory. We'll look at it next week. No, week after next, maybe. But he was given the victory. But God gave the victory. And we have been given the victory as believers. And I love this. I'll read this here. 1 Corinthians 15, 56 says, The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Do you, does everybody here have a victory tonight? We've got four people that's got the victory here tonight. He gave us the victory. It's done deal. I know. Yes, there's a, there's a, there's a battle in my, in my life through this sin-cursed world and a Satan that still bombards me, but I have the victory through Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and 1 John 5, 4 says, For everyone who has been born of God, there's, there's a key. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes this world. Our problem is the Satan, this world, and our flesh. He says, everyone that's born of God has overcome this world. David overcome Goliath. He did it by God Almighty. And then it goes on to say, and this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. A faith just like David had. If you got it. This world, it can come at you and beller and I'm going to cut your head off and feed you to the birds and scare you to death. <laughs> or you can tell them to shut up because I, I come to you in the name of the Lord, the one that's already whipped you and given me victory. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. All right. I'm going to read this. I suckered you a little bit there. This is, <laughs> this is good lyrics. As a matter of fact, you know, load it up. I just want it to play as we leave here tonight. When he told you you were not good enough, when he told you you were not right, when he told you you're not strong enough to put up a good fight, when he told you you're not worthy, when he told you you're not loved, when he told you you're not beautiful, that you'll never be enough, fear, he is a liar. Amen? Amen? Fear's a liar. Who's a liar? What the Bible say? Satan is the father of lies. If he's speaking, he's lying. That's what he does. Fear's a liar. He will take your breath, stop you in your steps. Amen? He will. He will listen to him. He will. Fear, but remember, he's a liar. Fear's a liar. He will rob your rest, steal your happiness, cast your fear in the fire. Called fear is a liar. Amen. Amen? Give God praise. Amen. Father, we thank you tonight. It's so good to be in your house tonight. And with your people just to come and be in this, this atmosphere where we look to you and we lift up your name. We cry out to you, Lord, and we speak your word. And we just believe it deeply in our souls and in our heart. Father, we pray that you'll just continue, Lord, to work with us. And just have your will and way. Lord, help us in some way, work through us in some way to touch a life, to save a soul in whatever way, Lord, you choose. But Lord, we just want to see lives change, the power of a living God to bring victory, victory to folks that are bound. So, Father, we thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right, play the song.
There it is. Y'all start. We dismiss. Yeah, you can just listen.